It's Scott. And as today, we have the pleasure of teaching here at Pensacola Beach, Florida. We wanted to go ahead and bring to you an impromptu Give Me Five on the go. Specifically inspired as we're on this beautiful beach with kids and drawing. So with that in mind, just a couple quick tips when it comes to little kids and drowning. The first of which is what's the difference between drowning and near drowning? Well, in real life, there's fancy definitions. However, what more and more people tend to honestly use is simply drowning means you died. And near drowning means you almost died. And why that's an issue is when you hear about the kids who fall through the ice and they are under the water for 42 minutes. And to no surprise, when the dive medics pull them out, they are flatline D-E-A-D dead. Discharged two weeks later, completely neurologically intact. How does this happen? Well, some people say it's because you were lucky enough to drown in really cold water. Other people, you remember, claim it's because of that whole diving of the mammalian reflex. But all science will currently tell you is relatively simple, and that's called, we don't know. They'll tell you, as a rule, the younger the kid, the colder the water, the better they do. But as a rule, we honestly don't really know. So why that's such a big deal? Simply, whether it's in pre-hospital or in the ER, is if you've got a kid who is under the water for just quote a minute but now they're awake alert screaming look absolutely great should they still bring them to the er the answer is absolutely yes what they recommend is even if the kid is cute just simply bring him in just watch him for a couple hours make sure they're breathing okay think about maybe getting a chest x-ray but to no surprise, after a couple hours, if the kid looks fine, happily, they're gonna do fine. The problem is, in the back of the ambulance, you've got a kid post-drowning who's in full rest. After a couple hits of Epi, you happily get this kid back. In the ER, parents very appropriately ask, how is my kid going to do? And again, if the child's awake and smiling, that's simple. It's not a true question, they're gonna do great. But if they're unconscious and you just got them back, that's a problem. And whether it's back or the rig of the ER, simply the answer to tell parents is we just don't know. That's important. It's not a cop-out. We honestly don't know. And personally, I geek out on this topic because years back when I was in grad school, I actually did my master's thesis specifically on how kids are going to do neurologically post-drowning and what kind of things guide us as to how the kid is going to do. But the moral of the story, again, if you're awake and alert, to no surprise, you do great. If you're anything but what the pediatric ICU recommends is give them up in the ICU 72 hours. Meaning, give them 72 hours of all you've got. And, with few exceptions, at or about 72 hours, plus or minus muscle minnows. More are guess at about 72 hours is when we have a far better idea as to how this kid is going to do. When it comes to pediatrics and prevention, which go hand in hand. Simply, remember Mark Twain summarized it nicely, where is he summarized it? By teaching that it's better to be prepared a thousand times than to die once. It's a little hard to take back.